Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to cover graphical methods of uh, uh, measuring, uh, uh, excuse me, representing displacement speed, velocity, and acceleration uh, in the study of uh, kinematics. So let's start with something which is the most basic, which is displacement time graphs. So let's assume for a second that there is a body that is moving and the displacement of this body increases uniformly over time. So that would be represented by a straight line like so, straight through the origin. Um, so you're plotting time on the x-axis, you're plotting displacement s on the y-axis. Remember, displacement is represented by the, um, by the letter s. Uh, so this is s uh, displacement, not s as in seconds. Uh, so if I was to try and understand the velocity of uh, this object, well, I would simply take the gradient here of this line. So I would take as much of this line as I possibly can to reduce the amount of errors we have. And I would try and take the gradient of this line. So delta S in this direction and some kind of a delta T in this direction. So the V, the velocity uh, that this object is moving at is simply the gradient of this line which is, once again, delta S divided by delta T. Now, what happens if you do not have uniform velocity? This happens, let's say, when you're starting a car and you know, you're know you moving, uh, your, your speed is increasing as time goes by. So you're, you do not have uniform velocity. So let's introduce the idea of instantaneous velocity. What is the velocity of this object at a certain time? So let us see if we can plot uh, how the displacement of this object changes. So let's see, let's say the object starts off moving slowly, 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 and then as time goes by, the, the rate of change of velocity increases. Uh, so clearly we don't have uniform velocity here. So the, the way we work through instantaneous velocity or the concept of instantaneous velocity is that you know we make the intervals of time over which we measure the average velocity shorter and shorter and shorter. This has the effect of approximating the curved displacement time graph that you see here with a series of short straight line segments. So if you try to approximate the um, displacement over a short period of time, let's say right at the beginning, maybe a straight line like that would be appropriate. Towards the end, perhaps the straight line would be a higher uh, gradient straight line and then in the middle it might look something like this so you can see these are clearly different lines there are different lines that we can join together to approximate this curved displacement time graph obviously the approximation becomes better the shorter the time interval is eventually when you get to extremely small time in intervals and mathematically the word we would use is infinitesimally small the straight line segment has the same direction as the tangent to the curve. And that's the key message here, that this limiting case gives us the instantaneous velocity as the gradient of the tangent to the displacement of the curve. So, so if I were to uh, write, basically use this middle one as an example, uh, I would take a tangent right here to the curve. The tangent of the curve might look something like this for, for this point. Uh, and uh, we have basically, uh, you know, we can take uh, the tangent to the curve uh, this way, tangent, is the instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity, V. So up until now, we've been talking about displacement time graphs, but you can also plot velocity uh, versus time. So perhaps you have a situation like this, where you have velocity over time being completely constant. So maybe it's a plane that's flying or something like that, right? Um, so if you take the area here of this velocity times t, what do you think that is? Velocity times the amount of distance traveled is quite simply the displacement. So the displacement is the area under the, under the, under the curve essentially or under the line of uh, velocity. What if uh, you have a different situation where let's say the object starts from rest. So the velocity at time zero is zero, it's right there. And as time goes by, the velocity increases. So 
what do you think the area is here? So the area, area is one half times delta v times delta t. Once again, you're multiplying velocity by by time. Um, so once again, in this case, the area represents the displacement. Still the same idea. So this guy right here, this one is the constant velocity uh, kind of graph. This is a, a body where the velocity is increasing at a constant rate. Uh, so this is constant velocity, and this is constant acceleration. So the acceleration in a velocity time graph is the change in velocity. So you basically, you know, just your do your delta V over a certain amount of time. Some people like to write it uh, like this, velocity at time two minus velocity at time one divided by time two minus time one. Some people write it like that. That's completely appropriate. So let us work through a problem to illustrate these concepts. So let us say we're given this problem that we have a, let's say a cyclist. Uh, she is going from point A to point B to point C to point D. Um, so from point A to point B, uh, she uh, she's in a race, let's say, right? She's accelerating. Uh, so she's increasing her speed over uh, 10 seconds to get to five meters per second. And then from point B to point C, she is traveling at a constant velocity. And then um, she's uh, perhaps the race is over at that point and she starts decelerating uh, from point C to point D and uh, comes to rest 80 seconds after she started her initial journey. So let's uh, work through some uh, items here. So what would be the acceleration uh, in the initial part of the acceleration? in the initial part of uh, traveling from A to B. So here, I think acceleration is simply, you know, delta V divided by delta T. So the change in velocity is she was five at point B, she was zero at point A, and there's 10 seconds have elapsed. So what do you think is the velocity, uh, is the acceleration of this, uh, of, of the first part of this journey? Well, it's half a meter per second squared. That's easy enough. So now at this point, uh, you have um, the cyclist traveling at uh, this, their maximum speed of five uh, meters per second. So what is the total distance that this cyclist has traveled? So the total distance has, uh, uh, if you recall from our uh, from our previous discussion, distance is basically the area under graph. So this is a trapezoid. We should be able to um, remember what the formula is uh, for a trapezoid. So let's just write that down. So that is simply one half the length of BC plus the length of AD times the height, which basically gives us one half plus 50 uh, times 50 plus 80 times the height, which is five, which works out to if you I'm just going to use my calculator here as we're uh, doing this 325 meters, that is the total distance that she has traveled. So that brings us to the end of uh, this video. In our next video, we're going to talk about doing the same problems rather than graphically. We're going to try and do them with mathematical equations. So I'll see you in the next video.